Hi, I'm Alan Irwin, Senior Software Developer at Santa Barbara Infrared and the lead designer of the IR Windows test automation software. What we're going to do in this series of videos is talk about the procedures and methods for testing infrared imagers. In this specific video, I'm going to be introducing some of the concepts we'll be talking about and talking about some of the tests and how they're organized. And those tests we'll be talking about in more detail in future videos. So right off the bat, what is testing? Well, testing is a well-defined series of procedures that are run on a device that you're testing using calibrated equipment and producing reliable and repeatable results and calculated results, uh, producing figures of merits for that camera. So, a figure of merit. A figure of merit is a final value or a set of values that are the result of these tests. And they usually have standardized names, things like SITF or MTF. And these are the final figures of merit that you're going to get on, uh, from a test on a camera. Now, the equipment should be a set of instruments that are defined before the procedure begins and are calibrated so they can reliably and, again, repeatably produce results when actually taking measurements on a camera. Some examples that are used in infrared testing are a black body or a voltmeter or some sort of a frame grabber from your imager. Now, the procedure, it should be a series of steps that are well-defined and laid out so that anyone who performs the test knows exactly what they're doing and produces them in the same order, again, so you get reliable and repeatable results from that test. And usually the uh, formulas used for calculating those figures of merit will be included in the procedure as well. There are two broad groupings of tests, or two categories or styles of testing on devices. There are what are called system tests and uh, component level tests. System tests are when you're looking at the entire system as a black box. In other words, I don't care the different components that, use, that are used to make up that camera. I'm just looking at the final ability of that camera to detect temperature or see small objects as opposed to component level testing, where we are concerned about the individual components. So in th that case, I may be trying to isolate the results from the lens of the camera, or the sensor of the camera, or the electronics of the camera. And when I'm doing component level testing, what I need to do is go into the box generally itself. There's more equipment involved. Uh, I need to actually know details about how a system is put together, the electronics, and the way that the system has been built. Those details are generally not important in something like system level testing, but when you're doing component level testing, they're critical. Now, why do we test? Well, there's several reasons for the doing testing. Right off the bat, it's characterization of your camera, or you could be looking to calibrate the camera or check for failure. For characterization, let's start there. Generally, this is early on in the development of a camera or when you're handed some sort of an imager that you know nothing about. So what you're trying to do is overall determine the operation, what this camera is capable of doing, as well as how to operate it or what the configuration of the camera is. So when you're doing characterization on a system, they're poorly understood up front, and you're trying to identify that. So you can also have responses from a camera varying based on not just not knowing the manufacturing details, but also because it's been used in the field, so it may be a camera that's had some aging or weathering, or it could be because there's variability in manufacture, and right off the production floor, you need to do some sort of analysis on that camera so that you can correct for manufacturing variability. Calibration is another reason for doing testing, and it's because you're trying to identify variability in a camera. And again, cameras can vary because of aging over time or variation in manufacturing uh, production. And those variabilities you're trying to eliminate. So you're trying to bring all cameras, all the cameras from a particular production run up to a point where they're producing similar results, or ideally the exact same results, from the same stimulation. And in that case, what you're trying to do is measure the performance output of a camera and produce some sort of a correction factor that will then bring that camera up to an expected standard. The third reason you'd be t doing testing on a camera is because you're checking for failure. This is generally when you're out in the field, you have a camera that uh, is going to be used in some critical operation, and you're trying to identify whether it functions properly before deploying or using that camera out in some operation. That's the third level of testing. It's checking for failure. Finally, what we do with tests is group them into categories so that you have a sense of what kind of equipment you're going to need to run those sorts of tests. For instance, infrared camera tests generally come in three different categories. There are response tests, there are resolution tests, and there are geometry tests. Response tests are when you're measuring the way the camera responds to, in the case of the infrared, temperature variation. So when I change the temperature, I want to see how the camera responds. 
either in a flat out linear response test like an SITF test or because I'm looking at how small a temperature variable uh, I can measure and that's when you're concerned about noise and you have tests like NETD used for testing the noise on a camera. Now resolution tests are when you're looking at how well a camera can see small things. How small can something be and still be resolved by the camera? This is more concerned with tests like MTF and MRTD. These are the tests that are used to determine the resolution on a camera. And the third groups of tests are geometry tests. And this is when you're trying to look at how well a camera can reproduce something that it is expected to see, and whether it's pointing in the right direction. The actual geometry of the construction and layout of the camera. So bore sighting is a typical geometry test, but so is the field of view when you're measuring the range of the field of view of the camera, and things like the distortion on a camera's image to determine how well you reproduce the overall image on the camera itself. So those are the three groups of tests, and that's our basic introduction. So now let's move on to the next video where we'll start talking about SITF.